Welcome back everyone. Today I have another support build that going forward could see a rise in popularity when the nightfall comes which is just around the corner. The Boots of the Assembler and Lumina combo is a very popular setup that a lot of players like to use when feeling a bit supportive every now and then, and its application in game is very strong in terms of keeping you and your team alive. So today I want to show you an endgame version of the build that can be used pretty much anywhere you like, and be the guardian angel you are. By using this build you will get a constant 15% debuff on targets, free healing and a 35% damage buff, huge energy return using the void subclass, and some amazing uptime for all your abilities and heals on the go. Now instead of us using solar, I'm going to show you why using void with this setup is 100% more better. So let's dive in. To start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void so each time you defeat a target with Void ability, you will get Devour. Then you want Child of the Old Gods so that each time you place your Rifts down and hit a target, you will send out a Void Soul that will drain enemies and grant you a grenade and health energy while also weakening targets. Just like this Seekin build we did a while back, the build here is going to need to focus on Rifts to be successful with it in endgame, since both the Boots of the Assembler will be providing additional support with Lumina in hand. I chose Void as Child of the Old Gods along with Boots the Assembler is a great combo in terms of healing and buffing others, while also debuffing targets and giving energy back in return. Compared to Solar, you will have a secondary reason to use your wrists more instead of just using them for the boots alone. Fragments used will mainly be focused around our Vortex Grenade, as both Discipline and Elemental Worlds mods will be used to create worlds and the debuff targets of all types. Echo of Persistence will increase the duration time of Devour. Echo Explosion will cause targets to detonate after a void ability attack, Echo of Undermining for a 15% debuff via grenades, and Echo of Remnants will increase the duration of Vortex Grenades. These fragments used will allow us to retain Devour for longer while also extending and enhancing the uses for grenades. With a high recovery and discipline stat and Child Your Gods in effect, the supportive nature of the build is going to allow you to have a high survivability rate in most endgame content and GMs of any type. For the mods and stats section, this will be relatively easy for everyone as the stats are limited down to only needing two active stats required, such as recovery and discipline. Resilience of course will need to be high as you're going to be getting a damage reduction either way, so tier 7 to tier 10 ranges is ideal for the long run. Both recovery and discipline will both need to be at least tier 8 to 10 because of the high uses they will be both providing. Recovery of course needs to be high since Boost the Assembler and Child of the Old Gods will be active for 99% of the time while on action. This means that mods such as Reaper Wallmaker is going to be recommended for the setup because of its tires to class abilities. You can use Elemental Ordnance instead since grenades will be used a lot as well. However, comparing the two, you'll get more uptime with Reaping considering that each energy being returned will be heavily invested back into your class ability so that you can repeat it. Now while there, I then recommend you add on the Battle of World mod and Weather Utility mod so you can further increase the feedback energy towards your abilities. Next, adding on the Connect Cypher mod, Taking Charge, and the High Energy Fire mod is going to allow your Illumina and other weapons to hit harder for a long time. Now you may think this is wasteful since Bless from the Sky will be active anyways, plus you'll be getting a 35% damage buff compared to High Energy Fire's 20%. However, this is to maintain the damage buffs we have going, as Illumina feels quite weak against most combatants you face in end game. Now I want to make sure that when Blessing is not active, I can at least rely on high energy fire instead, and vice versa. Plus, if you end up in a situation to where your teammates aren't around, and it's just you, then having high energy fire available easily will make doing solo events much more bearable. Of course, this can be swapped out for Elemental Orders instead, so that you can have two ways of creating wells, or well of tenacity for that extra 10% in damage reduction. The choice is yours. Left over, I would then recommend you add on the scavenger mod for whatever heavy is being used, and Lord Kelvin's Basilisk, and Luke and Finisher mod for their effects in end game. Now lastly, the weapons being used will of course be the Lumina Exotic. This is a 140 connect hand cannon that has a great base stats and flexibility when used in most content. Although it's great on paper, it doesn't compare to the many other 140s in games that can outperform the weapon in PvP easily. But as it's being used in PvE, this doesn't matter so much. The Blessing of Sky perk is going to allow players to boost themselves and allies' health plus damage 
for 10 seconds flat. And this is even more better when you have the catalyst for it as you can produce two noble rounds instead of one, so you can retain your buffs for longer. However, to fully make the weapon even more better than its design, you can combine it with boots of the assembler to overwhelm yourself with heals and buffs galore. It's thanks to the pairing that using both of the items at the same time is going to make being supportive in the long run relatively easy and effortless compared to most other builds we are familiar with. Yes, you can use them on their own, but you'll be losing quite a bit of benefits doing so. To further reinforce our primary, I have decided to use Retrofit Escape Aid with 4th times the charm and 1 for all as a heavy backup weapon to use against bosses. We have covered how lethal the weapon is on our Volatile Lion build and Secant build video, but in short, with damage buffs available and how effective its sustained fire is, it's one of those weapons that can outright make dealing with any bosses a breeze when put right. We can add on volatile rounds if we wish, but this will require you to sacrifice a fragment in the process. So for the conclusion, support builds are always a fun experience in any game with RPG elements, and this thing is true in Destiny as well. The Lumina and Boots the Assembler combo has always been a great pairing for those that want to lean heavily into healing and damage buffer in Destiny, as support of builds are quite rare to see most of the time. This may be because of the lack of support roles or content in game to warrant their usage, unless you play GM solely, which is true as mainly solo warlocks, invis hunter, and bubble titans are the only supportive roles offered in game. Which is why it's nice to try a different support role that is outside the normal solo warlocks. I wanted to try Void with the setup this time as Void Souls are really, really strong when heavily invested into, as the benefits are huge in the long run, such as energy return for all our abilities and a debuff applied to those within this field. But also you can get Devour as well and easily keep it going compared to what solo subclasses offer. I find that Void's abilities offer more to the table with assisting your teammates for longer, and all of this can be easily retained by getting kills and using your rifts. My issue with solo is that its aspects don't lean into the boosty assembler effects and it feels like unless you use your healing grenades with it, you only get a simple rift and that's it. With Void, it feels like it's worth the investment as you're getting something back and the ability has been offered allows you to push the support build more and more into the direction you like it to be. I know quite a lot of people may disagree with the stance, but I recommend you give this a try yourself and see just how good it is. It's easy to do and rewarding, and when using endgame, you actually can contribute more for your rifts, even while boots and luminol are active. But what do you think? So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was a great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you all again soon.